It has been said that ancient Egypt was a culture of death. Very little is left of ancient Egyptian daily life, but we know a great deal about them because of the lavish attention they devoted to their tombs, their treasures, their scrolls, and even their mummified corpses. Today, the religion of the pharaohs is meeting the technology of the 21st century. In an unprecedented study, Egyptologists are applying cutting-edge medical science to 3,000-year-old mummies. The digital technology allows Egyptologists to virtually unwrap mummies without harming these precious treasures. Yeah, oh, oh, I see. We even have the, uh, yeah. Yeah, the false gear. Yeah. Beneath the wrapping, a 2,000-year-old amulet protects the deceased from the dangers of the afterlife. Now, when they were wrapping the body, we also put amulets, protective amulets, all around the body, both in the front and also in the back. That would help the body achieve an afterlife. And what's quite nice is that some of these amulets are tied into things in the Book of the Dead. So you know that they are there to protect the body against specific perils that they're going to meet on the way through to the other side of the afterlife. Let's see, the mask was on. Uh... But why did the ancient Egyptians go through the trouble of preserving their dead to begin with? The ancient Egyptians mummified their dead because they believed that the soul really needed a more physical vehicle to enjoy all of the sort of physical delights of the um, afterlife. And so they used to mummify bodies, which meant preserving them so that they could be used by the soul to go back into the body, which would be perfectly preserved, and then could enjoy, you know, food, drink, anything else um, that the afterlife had to offer. But mummifying a body was not an easy process. What the um, bombers would do is remove all the internal organs, um, the lungs, the liver, the stomach, and the intestines. The organs were placed in ceremonial jars, known as canopic jars. They would later be entombed with the body. Next, a long hook was used to pull the brain out through the nose. The ancient Egyptians did not believe the brain was an essential organ. You can actually see the defect is right here, where they go in through the nose, punched a hole in the floor of the skull to remove the brain. Once the brain had been removed, they would melt resins and pour the liquid resin through the nostril and um, sort of roll the head around so that the cranium was coated. This was done so that they could prevent bacterial growth in the cranium. The heart is the only organ that would stay within the body. It was thought to be the center of intelligence and feeling. And they would need those in the afterlife. They would wash the body out, dry it using natron, which is a kind of a salt and baking soda kind of mixture. And after 40 days of desiccation had elapsed, they would put oil and unguents on the body, and then wrap it with great um, ceremony rituals, and that would be the end of mummification, and it would be buried. But mummification was just the beginning to a long journey. A journey for the soul of the deceased. And the Egyptian Book of the Dead was the only guide to a life beyond the grave. When you die, and you are getting to the afterlife, um, the way, the journey in between is very perilous. And the deceased spirit, before they were reborn forever, had to go through a series of tests. And the Book of the Dead provides answers and protection against the perils of the journey. This is a quest of immortality. Without knowing what is in the Book of the Dead, the deceased will never go to the afterlife. The most important thing for the ancient Egyptian in the afterlife. The Book of the Dead was a costly proposition, and the decision to purchase one was a difficult and complicated process. There were 186 spells to choose from, and a scroll would be produced based on a person's needs or budget. 
the priests of the temple would help a person choose which spells would be needed in the afterlife. Ephermat, we fash, quid kabi. Nan niru wat ashit tu wat khat. Ephermat, vi derma damad khod amit. Tumad, kuhed yo so. Anyat. I sometimes wonder if these Book of the Deads didn't start out in some ways as a little extra moonlighting for money. Once you convince all the rich people that they just have to have this thing, then, I mean, the sky is the limit in how much you could charge. The creation of one's very own Book of the Dead may have also been a status symbol of the times. Now, the Book of the Dead would have been quite expensive for any ordinary person to afford. And in fact, we can see this play out archaeologically. We find that the Book of the Dead is only possessed by members of the elite. Yet this was a change from the earliest days of Egyptian culture. Originally, mummification and an afterlife among the gods was reserved only for the pharaoh. In the New Kingdom, the Book of the Dead was written for everyone. It was found in the private tombs. It was found in the nobles' tombs. It was found in the tombs of the artisans. The spread of belief in the afterlife affected more than just the newly emerging middle class. There are those who believe the Book of the Dead affected Jewish and Christian scripture. Ancient Christianity owes a great deal to ancient Egypt for its concept of heaven. This makes sense because most of the early Christian fathers were native Egyptians. And so when documents were being written concerning the nature and substance of the afterlife, since these things were not originally written in the Bible, the ancient Egyptians sort of filled in the blanks. 